In this exercise, we're going to learn about Six Sigma methods called run and control charts. Run and control charts track events over time. They can help us visually identify and interpret patterns and trends to quickly spot and ideally anticipate and prevent problems. Let's use an example where we count the number of customer support calls. Each day's call count is represented by a dot on the timeline. A large number of calls in a day may suggest a quality problem with the product or service, a problem with documentation or training, or something else. So to start, first we draw a horizontal time series line and a vertical count line like this. Then we plot each day's count with a dot. You might look at event history if you have it, or just start tracking going forward. What you see here is a simple run chart. Now, draw a median line to fit the pattern. In a moment, we're going to pause so you can take a little time to study this example. What do you see? Do any stories come to mind that may explain what's happening based on this visual evidence? You may want to write them down. These are hypotheses, ideas that might help you interpret and understand what's going on, but you'll need to validate them later through additional observation, analysis, or experimentation. So go ahead and press pause on your YouTube console. I'll wait patiently as long as it takes, then restart. Now let's apply a couple of heuristics to try to understand what we see. First, let's remember that any extreme measures are out of bounds. They're also called outliers since they lie outside the range of acceptable performance. Now draw upper and lower control limit lines to fit the pattern. These lines describe the limits or tolerances of what is considered acceptable. The moment you draw these lines, this goes from being a run chart to a control chart. Now what do you see? I see three things. First, there's an outlier event. I wonder what happened here. Perhaps we should talk with someone and learn more about this. Second, I see the event pattern start to decline. It looks like a trend. There's another potentially useful heuristic here. Here's a popular old saying. Two points is a trend. Three points is a story. No, wait. Some people say three points is a trend. No, wait. Depending on how much normal variation there is, three points may just be random noise and not indicate anything at all. The point here is it's important to consider the amount of normal expected variation and volatility that exists in a particular situation. Then you must consider the degree of risk and the precision and tolerances required in order to determine how much rigor you need to use and the validity of conclusions you can reach from limited data such as this. In some cases, three data points is enough to say there may be a trend. What shall we do? In other cases, such as when significant health and safety are involved, it's a signal to call the team together to investigate more deeply before reaching conclusions. The bottom line, as we explored in part one, everyone needs to understand the degree of risk and precision required in each situation and use an appropriate heuristic or rule to interpret the data properly and guide your actions forward. So let's say in this situation, I think I see a trend. The pattern suddenly seems to downshift, then stabilize again. Will this continue? Perhaps we'd better keep an eye on it. If the trend continues, we may redraw the upper and lower control limits and establish a new baseline to indicate the new process and what the acceptable boundaries are. In the case of customer calls for assistance, this decrease may in indicate a good thing. But are we sure about that? 
the worst case scenario may be that our customers have become so frustrated that they've just given up and they stop calling. Looks like it's time to go investigate. Go to Gemba, as the saying goes. We explained this in part one. Time to go see, show respect, ask questions, look for data and evidence, and be humble. Don't try to analyze or solve the problem for them. Help them to analyze and solve it for themselves and remove any obstacles they can't overcome. So what's the third thing that I see? The downward trend occurred right after a significant outlier event. What's a potential hypothesis that could explain this? Perhaps there was a sudden spike in the number of calls. Somebody noticed there was a problem, asked why, and improved the situation. If so, maybe it's time to ring the bell, celebrate the achievement, and recognize the people who did it. Or maybe something else happened. I guess it's time to go see. To wrap up this exercise, it's time to reflect on how this method may help in a variety of problem contexts. So here are suggestions for using run and control charts in simple, complicated, complex, and chaotic scenarios. I suggest you pause this video and study this for a bit to grasp the important differences. Do you see any familiar patterns here where run and control charts may help you? Remember what we said in part one. Your simple or complicated situation may need to be stabilized first to remove random behavior before a run or control chart can show you a pattern that will help you to improve and innovate. This is the end of the presentation section of the run and control charts exercise. It's up to you to decide if you have a situation where this sort of approach might be useful and try it for a while. If you want to learn more, here's how to find the United Kingdom National Health Service Institute for Innovation and Improvement's Guide to Creating and Interpreting Run and Control Charts. During this Quick Start Problem Solving module, we're going to emphasize simple visual problem solving methods and tools. But as you can see, if you're in a situation involving a high degree of risk and precision using Six Sigma methods, you're eventually going to need to invest in learning some software. Start with a spreadsheet like Microsoft Excel, if you have it, or Google Sheets, which is free. They both offer powerful visualization and statistical capabilities for when you need them.